All right, we're at section 17.8, non-sinusoidal wave patterns. Uh, and they're showing you here three different uh, uh, waveforms, one for a tuning fork, one for a flute, and one for a clarinet. Uh, you can see with the tuning fork, it's a pretty clear sinusoidal uh, waveform, but for the flute and the clarinet, they're not exactly uh, straight sinusoids. Um, so what's happening? Well, the tuning fork, if you strike it right, it'll just have this back and forth uh, motion that causes the uh, a pure compression and rarefaction that's a pure tone to your ear. If you do strike a, a tuning fork uh, too, uh, too hard, you will get overtones and you'll get modes where you, you introduce other wave, uh, uh, other waveforms on the tuning fork. But if you hit it softly with a nice rubber mallet, you'll get uh, a pure tone. But with flutes and clarinets and saxophones and trumpets, you get all the all sorts of overtones um, that make the the uh, uh, their distinctive sound. So uh, that's what we're going to discuss. We're going to discuss these uh, wave patterns. Now, the if you break it uh, down, looking at its spectrum. This is just a time signature here of the waveform, but if you look at it at its spectrum, you'll see that the uh, tuning fork has only the fundamental. Uh, it's a pure tone, whereas the flute, it has all of these contributions from the different harmonics, the first, second, third, fourth. The first harmonic we call the fundamental, but you can see in the flute, the second harmonic is greater than the fundamental, then the third is slightly less, the fourth is still uh, greater than the fundamental, and then it decays from there. If you look at the clarinet, you have a, a pretty large fundamental, and then you have, uh, with each subsequent harmonic up to the fifth, you get it's a growing pattern, and then it de declines from there. So you have these combinations of overtones that make up the signature sound of the instrument. Um, oops, went wrong direction. So Fourier transform works in cases where Y of T plus capital T, the period, Y of T plus the period equals Y of T. What does that mean? That means it's repeating. That means that after the period starts, the waveform begins again. And you can see that here. If we take this as uh, Y of T, well, at Y of T plus a uh, one period, you see that it starts over again. So this is for repeating waveforms. Um, and so Y of T is equal to the sum of some coefficients, in this case, A to the N sine uh, two pi F of N T plus B to the N cosine two pi uh, F of N T. So the the coefficients will be different for uh, for the different waveforms. Um, for the, I'm sorry, for the different harmonics. Uh, and then your, your, your harmonics are, will be your first, second, third, fourth, and so on. And so the, as you sum these, you'll get, um, uh, uh, you'll get the, these uh, waveforms. And so here, let's look here, uh, the Fourier synthesis, waves of frequency F and 3F are added to give the blue curve. And you can see that the blue curve here is beginning to look a little bit like a square wave. And we're gonna learn that a square wave is nothing but the, the uh, odd, uh, odd harmonics. Now, let's, uh, one more odd harmonic is, is added, uh, a frequency 5F, and you can see that it's even more of a, a a square wave. And then the sensitive curve, this red brown one approaches closer to the square wave uh, when uh, odd frequencies up to 9F are added. Now it's one thing to see a static display. I think that's it. Um, but I'm going to show you a um, in Mathematica, I wrote this. It's not as elegant as the video that I'm going to follow uh, after this. Uh, it's, um, um, oh, I need to change my share new share, we're gonna to go to Mathematica and it's always a struggle to find, uh, I believe this is it. Uh, this is, this. you can see, um, I've got the, uh, 
the first vector, the second vector, the third vector, and you can see the, it's, it's basically the, the equations um, it, that, that we saw. Now, if I uh, move this, if you pay attention to the different colored, th this is a phaser, a phaser diagram. Uh, and as I move, as I, as I move, you'll, this blue one is going around once uh, every cycle. And this green one should be going around three times every cycle. The uh, blue, this light blue one, five times this kind of red one seven times and this purple one nine times. And the, as these things go around, they form a, um, they form this pattern that looks kind of strange if you just look at this oval, but if, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, the unwrapped version of it, it makes a, a, a square wave. Um, so, uh, you can see it, it wraps around. I think it plays better if, if we play it continuously, but I'm just gonna slow it down. And, and you can see these little arrows are going around many, many times uh, for each uh, iteration. You can see that the, the, blue, the blue vector is only going around once and the uh, green vector should be going around three times for every, uh, one that the um, the blue one goes and so forth. And so if you view it from a phaser diagram point of view, you can see how these uh, addition of each of these vectors makes a, a square wave. And I'm gonna follow this up with a, uh, another video that's much more elegant. They use Mathematica also, but it's much more elegant than this. I'm gonna include it in, the, in, in uh, this video that I'm, uh, uh, showing it's I, I think it's called the the uh, YouTube channel is called Smarter Every Day and it's an elegant elegant demonstration of uh, uh, Fourier series and Fourier analysis. But that wraps up the uh, chapter seventeen. That wraps up this uh, section on non sinusoidal waveforms.